Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, hip cowboys and groovy cow gals. You know, this is a real ranch here, you know, we got real cowboys, you know, they go to the rodeo and they ride the bulls and they sit around the campfire at night singing bebop tunes. Yeah, they don't sing any country western here, so eat your heart out, Garth Brooks. <laughs> You know, we have some pretty tough characters here. We got Jake, we got Luke, we got Billy the Kid. You know, when I was interviewing Billy the Kid, you know, he's kind of a tough little guy. You know, I asked him, uh, you know, well, have you ever been in any accidents, you know? Because he goes to the rodeo and rides the bulls and all. He said, oh, no, no, no. Once I was speared by a bull, he said, another time I was, I was bit by a, by a rattlesnake, you know? I said, well, what, don't you call those accidents? He said, oh, no, 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 no. They, they did it on purpose. <laughs> Crack me up. <laughs> you know, uh, a couple weeks ago we had a DEA fellow show up here, you know, an inspector, government guy, you know, he, uh, he came up to me and said, you know, we have to inspect your ranch for drugs. I said, well, we, we don't have any drugs here. He said, well, I don't know that. I have to inspect. You know, I said, well, okay, but uh, don't go out on that, on that uh, field over there. He said, well, I'll go anywhere I want. You know what he does? He pulls out a badge. He's got a real shiny badge, you know, and he's got a smile on his face. He said, I'm a government person, you know, I can inspect anywhere I want. I said, well, okay, you know, so he, he went out on that field. Next thing I know, I heard this call for help, you know, and he's out there, he's yelling, help, help. He's being chased by Big Bernie, our, you know, our big bull. He's being chased all around the field. He's yelling, help, help, help. So I yelled out at him. I said, hey, mister, just show him your badge. Show the bull your badge. <laughs> I cracked myself up on that one. Anyway, getting serious now. I'm going to play a song for you tonight. I'm going to talk about it after. You know, it's a, actually an old standard. It's not a country and western tune. It's an old, great standard called Tenderly. You know, sort of like Tenderfoot, but it's Tenderly. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to hippify it. You know, in other words, bring it up to a contemporary kind of feeling, you know, with the rhythm. And, uh, you know, add some substitute chords in there and so on and make it hip. You know, so I call this a hip groove inter interpretation of an old song. Make it sound new. So here we go with a great song called Tenderly. <laughs>
Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. This is where I talk about what I played. Now I'm, I'm doing this in one pass because I'm using OBS Studio and um, it's too complicated to restart the, the video again so I have to do it in one pass just as if you were here sitting beside me at the piano. So it's going to be like a piano lesson that is not non-script, no script. I'm just going to be talking to you directly and explaining what I played. Now, I called this video taking an old song and making it new because what I'm doing is I'm taking a song called Tenderly which was written in 1946 and I'm giving it a contemporary interpretation I would call it. Um, first by the backing track which is more like a funk contemporary groove kind of feel which would be more like a 70s or 80s even feel. Um, and then I'm reharmonizing some of the interpretation of, of the har harmonies to give them a more modern sound. And I'm doing some pentatonic type of things chordally, some modal things chordally. I'm going to talk about a few of those now to describe them. So starting out, I have like an E, hold on, I don't even have my, I gotta get get these babies on. All right, to hear what I'm doing. Everything's gotta be turned on. There we go. Yeah, so, there we are. So it's, I mean, e, I mean three flats, E flat. Three flat, three flats in the scale, three flat scale. So I'm playing the E flat six nine there in the first inversion. And that's that's first of all that's a modern sounding chord compared to how they played it in 1946 when he wrote this song. He wrote it like this as a major seven. Now I'm like putting it into the first inversion and I'm playing it as a six nine. So now automatically right there it has fourth voicings. Fourth, fourth, okay. So that gives it a more contemporary sound. Plus I'm using a backing track that is funky. So I'm using an electric bass and drums that are playing in a groove. Straight eights not, it's not a swing tune, it's not a ballad, it's like You just have to understand that it's, it is a funky rhythm. So, straight eights. So, so, I, so I start out with a vamp. Now, the interesting thing about the vamp is I play the E flat. Now, because the tune in the melody goes from the one chord to the fourth chord, four chord dominant. So it goes. So now that melody note on the four chord becomes a sharp eleven. So what I'm doing is I'm voicing it like this. But on the introduction, I'm playing that four chord as a suspended four nine. Now that's a bat a Burt Bacharach sound. It's a very... Now Burt Bacharach was big in the 70s and the 60s. But so I'm raising that third to the fourth. So what can I do? I can, I can play a lot of... Um, I can play a lot of pentatonic scales on, on any sus fourth chord. Why? Because the voicings can be can be played in in voicings of fourths uh, on sus four because you have a sus four in there. You know you don't have a third. You don't have a major third. You have a sus four. So now I can play fourths voicings that are based on fourth, perfect fourths. All these kind of voicings. Okay. So I have. There you have it. Now, to begin with, on the melody, so I'm going to 
continue with that. Goes to a four chord minor now. So now I did this thing. Now here's the thing that I'm doing that is going to make you have more expression in your playing is, is to put a combination of melody in the right hand, chords in the left hand, bass notes in the left hand, and then chords in the right hand, and melodic lines in the left hand. So I did this right away. Chords in the left hand, chords in the left hand, chords in the right hand, and now melodic line in the left hand. Now how do I know how to do that? It's just it's just a matter of the fact that I can harmonize, I can put melodic lines on the minor nine chord there. It was a James Bond thing, right? That's just five, sharp five, six, flat seven, major seven, you know, I can, I can do those kind of things in the left hand. No. Okay, so then the two chord, straight. It's related to, okay, that's a D flat chord. Now, normally it would be a D flat seven. I'm making it a D flat seven sharp nine. So in other words, you want to dress up all your dominant seventh chords by altering them. That's a general rule in, in how to make your sound more modern. So one of the great things you can do is, is to put sharp nines. Whenever possible, use a sharp nine or a flat nine or any kind of ninth chords. Always use nines. Always add nines to dominant seventh chords. And to any chord, actually any minor seven, major seven, always add the ninth. That's the first upper extension you want to add. Then you want to add sharp elevens, you want to add flat thirteens, and I'm doing that too. Actually that there, is the sharp 11, but it's the melody note, so I have to use it. So now I'm going down to here. That's the set of five of two. So it's a C7 chord, right? But I, what I do, again, because it's a dominant seventh, I'm making it a sharp nine. I'm using that ninth. So what's the hippest ninth you can use? The sharp nine. Why? Because it's very dissonant. There's the dissonance between the third and the sharp nine, but you can, when you put it in there, it sounds beautiful. And also there now on the five chord, which is a B flat seven. Originally, you know, in the original tune, it was written as a B flat seven. It would be like this. This is a B flat seven. I'm raising the fourth, so I'm going like this. I'm going. That's that, that's very pentatonic, you know. I'm I'm putting that raised fourth. Where's the fourth? There it is, right there. That C is the. Hello. B flat. I'm sorry. It's the E flat. It's the E flat. The E flat is the sus four. That E flat is the sus four there. One, two, three, four. You know, that'd be the regular chord. This, what, that gives it a more expansive sound and it gives you that pentatonic sound too. Use suspended fourths whenever possible to create that pentatonic sound, that modern sound. Okay, here. Okay, so we got that's a half diminished there, so you can't you can't mess with the half diminished chords. You no, know, it's a half diminished chord, and that's the way the composer wrote it. Then uh, you better stay with that, you know. So the. Now here we go. 
Now then we're using a major, um, we're using a minor minor nine with a sh with 11. Now here on the, it's two related, I'm gonna put the sharp 11 here. Now I'm gonna do something that Bill Evans does a lot and play thirds. To get to that, that two chord there, the two five into the two chord, I'm using C minor, thirds, putting the sharp 11 in there. See, so to get the modern sound, not only have, do you have to analyze the chord progression and make it hip, but you've got to figure out for every chord, you have to figure out what is the hippest voicing for that chord, which means you alter every chord uh, for the most part, particularly the dominant sevenths. You add the ninths, any kind of ninth that'll work, flat nine, nine, or sharp nine. Add the sharp elevens whenever possible and add the thirteenths whenever possible. That That is the rule across the board for any kind of modern sound. And then alter things chromatically, you know. Put those chromatic lines in there. Like that. You know. You know, the chromatic alterations of, of the chord are going to give you a modern sound. Um, now beyond that, everything is just rep repetition here. Just understanding the chord progression and you can look at a sheet, I'll put out a sheet for you. You can understand the, the um, what I'm doing with the rest of the song. There's, there's nothing new that occurs other than some different chords, but I'm using the same principles, you know. So let's review the principles. What you want to do, first of all, to create a new sound, you want to have a contemporary rhythm. You want to have a funk rhythm or a bossa nova or any kind of a rhythm that is going to change it from a, a swing or a ballad, you know, particularly straight eights. You know, it could be bossa nova or Latin or funk, which is, which I used. Then you want to reharmonize the chord progression so that you have better approach tones, better bass line than you would have in the original using approach tones. Then you want to alter the chords chord alterations, particularly the dominant sevenths, you want to add ninths in every case. In, mo in most cases of all chords you want to add ninths. Major sevenths, minor sevenths, dominant sevenths, particularly dominant sevenths you want to add ninths. Either the major nine, dom uh, flat nine, or the sharp nine. Then you want to add upper extensions, sharp eleven and thirteenths. An eleven, which would be the same as a four, Sharp 11 would be the same as a sharp 4 or flat 5, and the 13 would be the same as a 6, and the flat 13 is the same as a augmented fit. You want to understand that. Watch my videos if you don't understand that. And then you want to use the suspended fourth because that will give you a pentatonic sound because you have fourth voicings. And then create these kind of movements. Accordingly. So now you want to mix up what you're doing in your right hand and your left hand. So you have left hand melodic ideas. Like a Sorry. Anyway, I'm messing it up. But anyway, you have melodic ideas again like this. And you want to have right hand melodic ideas and melodic and harmonic ideas or like you know.
You see, so you want to mix it up between the two hands where the right hand takes on a harmonic aspect and the left hand takes on a melodic aspect and vice versa. Most of the time the left hand plays harmonies and chords and the right hand plays melody. Well you want to change that up, you know. So that's all I'm going to say. We'll cut it short here. Write to me if you want more and send me comments and thanks so much for joining me. We'll, we'll have a sign out now. We'll go back to the cowboy, the funky cowboy. Here we go. <laughs> Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please uh, send me a comment. I always respond to all your comments. And uh, until next time, I'll say in the words of Hermie Dressel, you know, and he's still up there riding and he's singing Home on the Range, but not like that. He's singing it like, Home, Home on the Range, with the deer and the antelope play, with seldom is heard at a charging word. All right, we'll see you. Bye.